guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Ruby. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a message verifier feature, which is a brand new feature uh, for Rails 4.1. And uh, basically, it, at first glance, it might not be obvious why you would want to use this, um, but it's really, really handy. And once I think, once you know how it works, you're going to find it uh, very handy as well. So um, what is message verifier? Well, it's generally a good feature to use when you are, uh, for example, when you need to send out an email to your user, uh, you know, when you're saying like a, a token, generally when you have a, a password reset tokens, for example, if you build web apps, you're going to have to build these features like resetting the password or, you know, a user can invite other users to join the application. So in those cases, you're going to have to send out some sort of email into that, you know, to that destination user that say, hey, uh, if you click this link, you can join this app or you can click this link to reset your password. You're going to have to send out an email and you don't have a way of knowing, you know, when the when the, that person comes back, who it is. So traditionally, we would use some kind of like a token, right? So we would save the token to the database and then we, we tack that token as a parameter onto the URL that we send in the email. And then when the email comes back, you load the token and then you know who it is, right? Um, you can do that, but then in that case, you would have to generate a token every time. But this way, using the message verifier, you don't have to use a token, right? Everything is stored in that encrypted message. Well, not encrypted, but signed and encoded message. Um, and when the user hits the URL with that message, you can decode and see what it says. So, you know, you could figure out who it is, uh, for example. All right, so uh, one thing is you guys are gonna have to set up some sort of secret. Uh, so I've got this set up over here. Uh, so I've got the secrets.yaml, it's a Rails 4.1 feature as well. You can store uh, all kinds of secrets in there and you can access it inside of your application and I'll show you how to do all that. Um, so I have a controller here uh, with a constant password reset secret and it's basically just loading from that secrets.yaml, right? Uh, so if you don't know, this is another Rails 4.1 feature where you can have a secrets.yaml and uh, you can store all kinds of stuff in there. You can call it as an object like that. Very cool. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go into the console. I'm going to create a message and then I'm going to use that message as a URL. I'm going to hit the controller and try and decode that message, right? Um, all right, let's get started. I'm going to hit the console, right? So I'm going to exit, clear that out and go back into Rails C. So basically, uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have that uh, verifier, right? So active support message verifier dot new. And I'm going to use that rails dot application dot uh, secrets dot password reset secret. All right. So this is now using that secret we generated. And uh, this object here uh, is the verifier. Now, let's say, for example, my message uh, is how do you do? Actually, I don't want to use a string. I changed my mind. So let me do something a little bit more um, useful. So I'm just going to generate a message with like something like user ID. And the user ID is going to be like two, three, four, right? And I'm going to add this another attribute expires at uh, time dot now plus two dot days. So this is just a regular hash, right? We all know what a hash is. Or if you're watching this video, you should know what a hash is. And uh, instead of just, you know, we, we can't really send this message as a URL, you know, like we can't, like it's just not going to work. Um, so what we can do is we can use the message verifier. That's why we have it here. So I'm going to have another variable called signed message equals. And here I'm just going to do verifier dot generate message. So I'm going to pass that message in. It's going to give me, uh, okay, I misspelled generate. All right, so this is the message that is signed, right? You can't read it, but you can put it in a URL. So how do we put it in a URL? Well, uh, in the console, 
uh, we can have access to the routes. So I'm going to use edit password URL and message uh, is a signed message. So this URL is something that you would send in the email, right? Once you send this email, the user is going to click. He's going to come and access your server. Uh, so I'm going to simulate that in the browser here. So I'm just going to go over here. And before I do anything, I'm going to put binding.pry. Uh, I covered what binding.pry is in one of my videos. Uh, so I'm going to add a link to that. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. So I'm going to go binding.pry. I'm going to see how I can decode that message that I got sent right from the from the browser. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to give me that delay because of the binding.pry. Uh, so I'm going to go into my it's console waiting. for a request. So here we are again, and this time it should work. So verifier equals active support. Dot new and uh, password reset secret. So here we are with the secret. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decode that message. So decoded message equals verifier dot verify and we're going to pass in the params message just like that so uh now we have the user id uh if if this application has a user authentication all that kind of stuff i can use this to load the user so user dot find uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't have a, a user model in this application. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I am sure you guys understand where I'm going with this. And then I can just do user ID, right? So this will basically load that user and then you can render the entire password reset page. And you might be wondering why we have this expires at, well, we can, we can check to see if this message has expired or not using the expires at field. So for example, if time dot now is less than uh, decoded message dot, uh, sorry, expires at, then it's okay. So we can have an if condition that checks that the time that this message is valid is not, it hasn't expired. Uh, so for example, if you generate this URL and then the person doesn't click it and then seven days later, the email gets hacked, they can come and click on this and you know, it's that the person who has access to this can, can hack the account because he clicked on it. He can now come to the reset page and he can set his own password. So you got to be careful with this. Um, you know, the expires at will make sure that, you know, after a certain date, this message is no longer going to work. Um, so that's just one simple case. So here, what we can do is we can now translate this code over here and we can do something like a decoded. So wait, verifier equals active support message verifier. And I can pass in that password reset secret. And then here we just do mess decoded equals verifier dot verify. So I think I misspelled that. And then we pass in params message. So the decoded uh, is the decoded message as I showed before. And then we can just do whatever we want with the message. And we, if you want to check if it's expired, we can do if time dot now is less than decoded expires at. Okay. I forgot to uh, add the dot new over here. Um, Okay, so let's give this a shot and uh, I'm going to go into the console and just going to hit render over here. So I'm just going to remove that and just hit enter. So everything should work. Um, now we can decode our message and all that kind of stuff. Um, so one thing that I forgot to mention is that um, by, you know, the message verifier also checks the message for tampering. So for example, if in the URL, somebody tries to modify the data, so like put 000 in there, hit enter it's going to give you this error, um, invalid signature, right? Uh, which is exactly what you want because you don't want anybody tampering with that message. 
All right, guys, so that wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And don't forget to like, share, and uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, this has got to be definitely one of my favorite uh, new features in Rails 4.1. You can use this uh, for more than just, you know, messages and emails and links and stuff. You can also use something like this to secure your uh, web API. So to secure, to secure your API requests, because, you know, in an iOS application or an Android application, you might not want to use sessions because using session requires that you use some sort of browser. Um, so in the, in the past, I've built, uh, I've worked with iOS developers who, um, you know, th they don't want to use a session. So using something like a message verifier can be a very good way to basically you encode the user session on the phone. And, uh, you know, you, when you, when the session, when the request hits, you take that header, uh, and then you decode it and you find out which user it is. I'll get maybe more into it in another episode, but yeah, this should introduce you to the message verifier and I'll, all right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode.